Welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor for Creative Memory Scrapbooking, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks fabulous. And today, I'm really excited to show you what I'm doing. Um, a few weeks back, one of my subscribers asked if I could show how to adapt the plus sign design sketch technique into an eight by eight page. And I thought, ooh, that's a great idea. So I believe it was Joan Leakes, if I have it correct, who asked for it. So this is for you, Joan, and anybody else who ever had a question about it. So let me get down to my workspace here. Give me one second and we'll get started. Let's see. Here we go. So it is time for another plus sign design, one of my favorite times. Um, so what you'll need to create is your zero centering ruler, your pencil. If you have the sketchbook, we'll be creating the, whoops, <laughs> we'll be creating the sketch that you will find on page 49 in your book, okay? And um, you'll need your 12 inch trimmer and whatever decorative elements you wanna use on your page. Other than that, it's not that difficult. So let me show you what the 12 by 12 version will look like, just to give you an idea. Ta-da, isn't that pretty? So I used the Tropic Time Collection here. I went down to Naples, Florida, um, with a couple of friends in, uh, back in March. So I have a lot of photos that I want to scrap from that. So I decided I would use Tropic Time because it just works perfectly for that particular trip. So here is my 12 by 12 version. All right, so let me show you my 8 by 8 version. Ta-da! <laughs> Isn't it pretty? So there's not a lot of difference. It's really just about um, the photo sizing is going to be different, but everything else is pretty much, it's the same basic layout, okay? Um, I tried to keep everything as the same as I could. This is a mat from the Variety Mat Pack. So I didn't have a mat from there that matched this size, but it's good enough to give you the idea of how to translate a 12 by 12 to an eight by eight. All right. So now let me show you, uh, let me get the sketch. Hold on a second. So I photocopied as most of you see me do every week. I photocopy the sketch. I did it twice and I measured out, I did the measurements for a 12 by 12 page. And then on my second one, I did measurements for an eight by eight page, all right? So let me just go through it real quick. Um, so if you've never seen uh, my plus sign design technique done before, I'm gonna link a video to this one and you can watch the whole technique um, that I do from start to finish. I wanted to kind of speed the process up today because we we're trying to do two pages um, in two different sizes. So I didn't want to take too much time on something that a lot of you have probably seen me do many times. But if you haven't, check out the video that I have linked to this one, and that'll give you the whole technique from start to finish. OK, so what I do is I take my zero centering ruler and I find the center point at the top of the sketch and the center point at the side of the sketch. And I draw two straight lines to create a plus sign. So I did this for a 12 by 12 layout. Now there's no difference here, except I just made the measurements for an eight by eight layout. So when I create my plus sign design on a 12 by 12 page, it gives me four six inch square or four six inch quadrants. Now, of course, on an eight by eight page, that's gonna be different. I'm gonna get four 
four inch squares or four inch quadrants. All right. So it scales down just a bit and that's okay. You can still make it work. So now over here, and I'm going to hold this up closer so you can see it. So for my 12 by 12 page, and let me get what I created up here too, so we can refer to it. All right. So I noticed that the top half has just a little bit of paper from the bottom two quadrants sneaking over into that those two quadrants. So I wanted to make sure I allotted enough space for that. But what I decided to do was start with the little smallest piece first. So down the bottom of the page, we have this one strip that goes across the whole page. So I made that one inch. Now on my eight by eight page, I also made that one inch. So there's no difference in that. Now the difference is gonna come on the next step. So for this lighter shade of gray, that's mostly in the bottom two quadrants, but it goes a little bit into the top quadrant, I decided to make that, um, let's see, five and a half inches, okay? And then my top piece, which is that darker gray, is also five and a half inches. And if you add all that up, five and a half plus five and a half is 11, plus one is 12. So now I know I have 12 inches of paper to play with here. And it's all going to be 12 inches long. So I know that's 12 as well. So that's it. I'm done for that. Now on eight by eight, it's a little bit different. Um, so the same thing is true. Part of this light gray paper that's mostly in the bottom two quadrants spills over into the top two quadrants. So I decided to make this one three and a half inches. And then I made the top one also three and a half inches. So if we have three and a half and three and a half, that's seven. And then the one inch down the bottom makes eight. Now on this, because we're doing an eight by eight page, we're going to have to cut about four inches off of the end to get a true eight by eight page on each sheet that we cut, okay? So I'll go through and show you on this, but just so you see, um, this is what it looks like as an eight by eight page. So pretty cute, right? And you know, I should have taken the time to measure what the photo mats are, but I'll, I'll do that now and show, uh, talk about it as we go. All right, but I just love this. Wouldn't it be cool to make two albums at once when you make your 12 by 12 page? Go ahead and make an eight by eight page with it. Who'd like to do that? Let me see that in the comments. <laughs> All right, so let me get some plain white paper and we'll get started. Oops. I'm in the wrong folder. All right, so here's one. And let me get one more. Oopsie. I think I got one more here. I meant to take that out before I started. And I forgot. All right, so this is a 12 by 12 sheet. I need one, so I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm going to cut down my second one to an eight by eight sheet because this is going to be my base page or base base piece. <laughs> Can't talk tonight. It's been a long weekend, apparently. All right. So let's just open this up and we're just going to go ahead and make an eight by eight inch square. All right. So I lined up at the eight inch that way. And I'm turning once and lining up at the eight inch that way. So now I have my eight inch square and my 12 inch square for both my pages. Now I'm still going to use Tropic Time for this. And let's see, I am going to use this blue stripe. And it's kind of, um, it's white with gray dots. The design on this one, it's kind of like, I don't know, it looks like little trees to me <laughs> or triangles. 
All right. So for my, oops, and I think I need to pull out two more sheets. Hold on one second. <laughs> because I'm making two pages here. I do need to pull out one more here. Oh, no, wait, do I? Let's think about it. No, I already did. Silly me. All right. I think I need to pull out one more of these. So. This and this. All right. Okay. I'm going to put this to the side. This is really one side, and the trees with the gray dots are the back side. So one sheet of paper will do one page. All right. So let's look at our 12 by 12 page first. So we are gonna cut um, one inch. So I'm gonna come over here and cut on the right side of the trimmer. Just gonna cut one inch. And then we're gonna go this way and we're gonna open the arm and we're gonna cut right where that crease is because that's the five and a half inch mark right where the arm meets the base of the trimmer. That's your five and a half inch mark right there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut five and a half inches. And now because I know five and a half plus five and a half is 11, and this is one inch, I'm done cutting. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna cut for my eight by eight page. I told you, this is super simple. <laughs> Everything should be this simple, right? So to make things easy, I think what I'm going to do, I want my stripes going vertically on the page. So I think I'm just going to start by cutting the whole page down to eight inches. So I'm going to cut that strip because this could be a usable strip on another page. So why waste my paper, all right? Now I'm going to turn it vertical, uh, well, horizontally, and I'm going to again cut one inch. All right, so here's one, and then I'm going to move this way. And now my next cut should be at three and a half inches. And my second cut, actually my third cut, should also be at three and a half inches. And this piece is gonna be extra. So you can put that with the other strip that you cut. And the cutting is done until we get to the mats. So let's get our base pages put together first. All right, so I'm gonna put that to the side. Oops, I'm having a hard time picking that up. <laughs> All right, so this is what this page is gonna look like. So I'm just gonna start tacking everything down. So the one inch strip goes at the bottom of the page and it doesn't matter what size your page you are working on because it's gonna do this on the eight by eight page and the 12 by 12 page. And then we're gonna put our second piece and it doesn't overlap, it just goes up against the one inch strip. All right? And then I think it's easier if you turn the page upside down and adhere the last piece. And if there's a little bit of space between these two pieces, don't worry about it because you're gonna put a border here. So that's gonna cover up anything. Uh, if you have any mistakes, it's gonna cover it, all right? And actually, when you look at it, you could do this page either way. You could do it with this side being the top or you could do it with this side being the top. And that's how we're gonna do it tonight with that side being the top. So let me tack down the 12 by 12 page. And it's the same concept. 
So we'll do our one inch strip first. Just taking the time to line it up. And then we're gonna do our little trees. And if you have a directional print, make sure you're putting it in the direction you want it to go. <laughs> Oops. All right. And then again, I'm going to turn it upside down and put my last piece on. And again, I'm going to line it up to the bottom flush at the bottom because if I have any space or if I go too far, it's okay. I'm going to cover it with a border. So nobody's going to know. That makes this even better, doesn't it? My worst problem or my biggest problem, I should say, is just lining things up correctly. I don't know why it's so challenging for me, but it is. <laughs> All right. So here are my two basic layouts. I mean, that's really simple, right? So now I'm going to go and add some simple borders. So this pack, Tropic Time, came with some border strip stickers. And I think a nice golden color will really brighten this up a little bit. And look at their little sunshines. How fun is that, right? And you can pop the middle of the little sunshines out if you want. Uh, I'm going to try and keep them all in there, like so. Cute, cute, cute. So I'm putting one at the top of my little trees and one between, my, well, pretty much right at the seams. So that way um, your mistakes get covered. That's what stickers and embellishments are for, aren't they? To cover our mistakes. <laughs> All right, let me know in the comments if you've ever used an embellishment to cover a mistake you made. I will tell you I am the biggest offender. <laughs> All right, so look at that. How cute and pretty is that? All right, so now we're gonna come over to our eight by eight page. I just wanna tack down this corner a little more so it's not sticking up. And I'm going to take my little sunshines and I'm just gonna start right at the beginning. And again, I'm just covering the little crease and I'm going to cut, turn it over upside down and just cut the extra off. All right, so cute. And I'm just going to put these back on because I can certainly use this for another layout. All right, we are getting there. All right, now we're going to go across our little seam where our one inch strip meets our little tree paper. Cute, cute, cute. And now we'll just cut off the extra again. All right, how's that? I love that this can translate so easily to another page, an eight by eight page. All right, so we've got that done. So now it's just about our mats and embellishments. So let's look at my 12 by 12 page and see what we can do here. So I used a mat from the Variety Mat Pack. So I'm gonna use this one here, all right? And then, I'm going to take this, this is a little journaling box, and I'm going to cut this in half. So this is, um, let's see, six and a half by four and a half. 
So I'm going to cut this at three and a quarters, right in half. All right. And so that will go there. Cute, cute, cute. All right, this I'm going to leave for my eight by eight page. So I'm going to put it over here in the corner and we'll come back to that in a minute. Just trying to make some more space on my desk here. All right, so then we need three mats here. And I believe these mats measure, let's see. So these are three and a quarter by four inches. So let's make three of those. So I'm gonna use this little green flower paper. Let's see how this looks. So I think I said three and a quarter. Let's see. Dee, dee, dee. Right. And then I'm going to cut at the four inch mark. One. All right. Oh, this looks so pretty. Love it. All right. So there's my, um, you know what? I think these are bigger. What did I do wrong? <laughs> Let me remeasure. Hold on. So this ended up being three and a quarter. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I did four and a half inches. That's my problem. I didn't measure correctly. So it's three and a quarter by four and a half. So let me recut. So I want it to look right. So three and a quarter. It's always good to have a ruler handy, isn't it? And we need to make one more. So three and a quarter. All right, this is extra. And well, if you already cut, hold on to these. These might work out for your eight by eight page. So don't throw them away just yet. All right, so we're going to do four and a half inches this time. <laughs> All right, so we've got what? The much better, much better. And I'm going to, I know I stacked, but I'm just going to take one off. So I just need one more in that size. All right. Much better, right? Pretty. Loving this. Okay, so that's eight by eight. And then it's really just about putting your own embellishments on however you want. All right. Now, the only real tricky part I had for the eight by eight was figuring out how to size down the photos and the little journaling mat. So what I did, let me get my ruler out again. Oh, where'd I put it? <laughs> I'm telling you, when you scrap, you lose everything, don't you? All right, so it looks like my photos here are two and a half by three inches. So I can use these three and just cut them down. So let's stack them and line them up at two and a half. And then we'll cut at three inches. Now, an eight by eight album is a really great album to use for gift giving. Um, I've used this many times for uh, friends who maybe have been going through some difficult times. Um, and, you know, you, you could even make these a little smaller if you wanted to. 
I think the border I used is a little bit wider than this one. So I could cut these down just a little bit more, maybe to two and a quarter. Let me just try that to see if that'll fit a little bit better. But you can certainly do some little wallet prints in an album like that. Um, oops. Just trying to keep them all stacked nice and neat. I was cutting the wrong way. That, that's not good, is it? Oh, but that's the length. So I think I want to take it off here. So I'm going to do two and three quarters. That's what I'll do. Let me stack it. Oh, you got to really think things out. All right, two and three quarters. Ah, let's see how this looks. Oh, much better. Super cute. Okay. And then up here, I believe this was five, I think it was by three. Yep, five by three. So let's see what we've got here. I might be able to use this scrap. Love it when I can use my scraps, right? Or my mistakes. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Oh yeah, that's, I can make that three inches. That will work. Let's see, three, and then five. All right, looking good. All right, so my last thing is that nice little photo mat. And I think what I'm going to do is cut it in half lengthwise. So this was cut at three and a quarter inches. So it's three and a quarter inches wide. So I'm going to try and get that at the halfway point. One and a half, one and a half would be three. And then just a little bit over that one and a half inch mark. So it looks like it would be one and a half, two marks past the one and a half inch line. And I would think I would know what that is, right? <laughs> uh, let's see, okay. So that gets me a nice little halfway point. And then all I did, I believe, let me look at my, oh, it's right here. I ended up cutting, a good chunk of it off at the bottom and then covered it with the sticker because I wanted it to be the same height as my photo at the top just to give it a better visual effect when you're looking at the page. So, you know, you're not going to be able to journal a lot, but you can get the basic information in a date, a location, who's in the photo, um, something that will jog your memory, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to make this the same. So this would be three inches. So let's cut at the three inch mark. And now I can put it here and I'll cover up. I put it flush against the side. So then it doesn't look a little awkward there, right? It looks better when it's flush. And then I'll put a sticker here and that will cover it up. So let's go ahead and look at that. But our cutting is done, right? Love it. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and put some tape runner on everything and get it all tacked down. Now, for my 8x8 page, I'm going to line it up and find my 4-inch mark on my mat and then just center it on that four inch mark as best I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. I find working from the middle out helps to make things look 
a little more evenly distributed on your page. Right. And then we're going to back this down. We're just going to make sure the top and the bottom line up with the mat for the photo. So this mat ends up being uh, three by five. And these, I believe, ended up being two and a quarter, two and three quarters long by two and a half wide. All right. So here's my eight by eight here. And let's go ahead and tack down our 12 by 12. And again, let's keep it easy. All right, I'm gonna line this page up on my mat. Find my six inch mark because that's the center point of a 12 by 12 inch page and just try to center it as best as I can. And put my other mats around it like so. This just ends up being such a cute layout and it's easy and repeatable, right? Love those layouts that are easy to remember. So you can do them again and again. And with different papers and photos, it looks like you've done something different every time. And this is a nice four and a half by six and a half inch mat. So you can get a nice four by six photo in up at the top. Now, if your photos are different in size, go ahead and adjust accordingly to your photos. I think you always should do that. But if you're not sure, go ahead and use the measurements that are here. All right. So these mats down here end up being four and a half by three and a quarter. All right. So now all we have left is embellishing. And I'm just trying to find my stickers. Hold on. Here we go. So let's see. Uh, righty. I've got some stickers here. And I've got some titles. Let's see what we can get out of here. All right. So if you look here, we did our little embellishment triangle to make sure the eye gets drawn across the page, right? I think that's really important. So I think for this one, I'm going to use, let's see. Um, oops, let me put this one out too. So let's do, I think, Beach Essentials. And let's see, I think this will work nicely. Look at that. It's just going to cover. If I wanted to, I could do some foam squares here. But this is great. So I'm pretty much keeping the page uh, the same, just trying to scale it down a little bit. So let's see, we need another little title down the bottom. And I'm thinking, well, let's see. I like this one, good life. And we need a little turtle. And let's see, we have good life here.
And my little turtle. Look how cute this is. All right, and then we just need another something. <laughs> what to do? And that needs to go somewhere up here. So I think, let's see. Hmm, let's play this little guy. Ooh, I think that works nicely. So let's try that over here. Oh, it totally works. Okay. So now I have two pages for my 12 by 12 album and two for my eight by eight. And yes, you could definitely make both of these into a two page spread. If I had just continued the paper here, look what a cute two page spread that would be, right? Same thing with my 12 by 12. I could easily make this a two page spread. Super cute, right? So in answer to your question, Joan Leakes, yes, we can adapt the plus sign design sketch technique to an eight by eight page and have it work out perfectly. <laughs> um, the photos will be a little different size. And of course you'll have to size down in general, but look at not too different from your 12 by 12 page, is it? It works. So Joan, thank you for your question. I think that's awesome that you made that suggestion and I appreciate it. Now I'm gonna come up to me because I wanna talk about my little contest here. Hold on, let's get back to me. Here we go, okay. So um, I think I told you all how I did get a thousand subscribers, I'm over a thousand. And I wanted to celebrate a little bit with all of you because it's because of you that I got there. So first of all, thank you to all of you. And I want to have a fun little contest to see if we can give out some prizes to people. So I have a few little things. I'm going to have to read a little bit here so I don't forget what I wanted to tell you. The contest is starting today, July 9th, and it goes through Friday, August 11th. Okay, so there are a few different things you can do. I'm going to be giving five $20 product credits away, one $50 product credit away, and one $100 product credits away. So one lucky person will get $100 in product credit. One lucky winner will get $50 in product credits. And five lucky winners will get $20 in product credits, okay? So here's what you can do to qualify for these products, for these credits, rather. Um, from this video until any video up until August 6th, make sure you comment in each video. Tell me something that you like about the video. Make a suggestion for what you'd like to see me do next any kind of comment like that, and that will qualify you into the prize drawing for a $20 product credit. Um, if you share my channel with a friend or family member or coworker, whoever you know, and they subscribe and they put your name in the comments, you both get entered to win a $20 product credit, all right? Anyone who subscribes to my channel from now through August 11th will qualify for the drawing to win a $20 product credit. So you may be watching right now, but you may not be a subscriber. So if you subscribe, I will see it and you will be entered into that drawing. Okay. If you are already a subscriber, I can see you. <laughs> and you're already going to be entered into the drawing, okay? And that's for the $20 product credits. Now, if you want to win a $50 product credit, all you need to do is shop on my website and spend $50 or more. Kind of cool. You spend $50, you could win $50 in 
product credits. So go ahead to my website and my website is www.creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Michelle Fitz. And that's in the description for the video. Okay. And then if you want to earn a hundred dollar product credit, if you sign on and join my team, you will get a hundred dollar product credit. You have to be the first one to sign on with me. <laughs> so that's the catch. <laughs> All right. So if you have any questions, let me know. You can always reach out to me at uh, Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. Um, last time I gave away $10 product credits. So this time I wanted to up the ante a little bit and give away a little more. So it's going to be more fun. <laughs> All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Don't forget to put a comment in here somewhere. I hope you like this idea of going from a 12 by 12 sketch to an 8 by 8. I thought it was a great um, suggestion, and I'm so happy that you did suggest it, Joan. Um, and I hope you like what came out of it. So it can be done. Let me see what you can do. <laughs> all right. Again, thank you all for watching, and bye for now. I got to find my mouse. <laughs>